Now let us move on to the classification of the polymers. We know polymers are classified as natural and synthetic. Natural polymers may be further classified into inorganic and organic. Similarly, synthetic polymers can also be classified into inorganic and organic polymers. So, what are these inorganic polymers? Inorganic polymers are those examples having clay silicates, cellulose, RNA, DNA, protein, polypeptide, all these are Orga organic polymers whereas clay silicates are inorganic polymers and synthetic we can have silicone silicate based everything and organic is polyethylene propylene polyesters the pvc pipe that we use polyurethanes all these are organic polymers so classification this particular classification it is done based on what source so based on source you can classify as natural and synthetic also based on applications we can classify as plastics fibers and elastomers so you can classify polymers based on source and based on application based on source you can classify it as natural and synthetic which is further classified as inorganic organic and based on applications you can classify as plastic fibers and elastomers so this is about the classification now being a textile technologist based on source we are going to see two examples cellulose and nylon okay so cellulose is an example for natural polymer and nylon is an example for synthetic polymers so let us take the natural polymers that is based on source the available natural polymers are rubber wool cellulose starch protein so these are some examples which we were discussing even in the last class itself so you can have starch protein cellulose wool rubber etc and uh, now we are going to uh, study the polymer system based on cellulose which is uh, cotton okay i have drawn the polymer system for you please observe the polymer system for a minute this is the polymer system of cotton have you observed it yes so in the polymer system of uh, cotton you can see this is actually a linear polymer the polymer chain it is on the single plane if you take and put it on the table it will be as in the single plane more or less so it is actually a linear straight chained uh, polymer which is a linear polymer this is actually the polymer system of cotton it is actually a linear cellulose polymer and you can see the repeat unit here it is two glucose unit we call that as cellobiose okay i can indicate the glucose unit here you can see this is glucose is nothing but c6 h12o6 okay so the glucose unit can be indicated like this including the carbon you can draw like this so this is your glucose unit 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 you have 6 carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so 12 hydrogen atoms and 6 so well, the hydrogen atoms may also get replaced so you can have c6 h12 oh okay this is uh, the glucose unit and you can see two glucose units attached together one and two two glucose units attached together forming as the repeat unit so this is the repeat unit of your uh, cellulose okay uh, and uh, it has nearly 5000 cellobios units how many cellobios 5000 repeat units are there can have 5000 repeat units and these two glucose units combined together form the repeat unit and there are 5000 repeat units here and you can see also observe OH groups that is present OH groups hydroxyl groups both in free as well as in the methylol hydroxyl group so this is called as methylol so this is methylol group and this is simple OH group 
Why I am talking about OH group is it plays a major uh, part during your in deciding the nature of your polymer. This OH groups will part uh, will play a major part. Also, you have glucoside oxygen atom which will indicate electronegative character. This is nothing but your glucoside oxygen atom. So, if you see the structure of cellobios, even if you draw only these two units that will suffice, this is two glucose unit combined together will form a cellobios unit and you have one hydroxyl group here as well as methylol hydroxyl groups are present and uh, this hydroxyl group will, in, will give polar nature. polar nature for your uh, polymer. This is very important and you can see it is attached to the adjacent carbon atoms. You can see the units are linked uh, together by means of adjacent uh, carbon atoms. Also, if you see the structure, the crystal structure, it is well ordered. And it is crystalline. Of course, the polymer will be having amorphous regions also, but if you see it has 65 to 70 percentage crystalline region and you have 35 to 30 percentage, 30 to 35 percentage of amorphous region. In a polymer, this region will decide the intake of whether the polymer is hygroscopic or not. And uh, you can see this link, this linear chains, one, this is one linear chain, there will be other linear chain also. You assume this is one linear chain and there will be other linear chain also. They will be held together by Van der Waals forces, but the forces is very weak. Therefore, it does not decide uh, many things here. The main thing that decides is the hydrogen bonding that is present in this uh, polymer chain. So, Van der Waals forces are also present, but this uh, is not the much uh, importance. It is not of much importance. It is like a wire network. The structure will be like that of the wire network. If you see what are the physical properties of this, uh, the most important physical properties are tenacity, electroplastic nature and hygroscopic nature which decides the polymer structure. As I have already told you, it has nearly 70 percentage of the crystallinity. Therefore, uh, the fiber is very long fiber and it has 70 percentage of the crystallinity and this is one of the few fibers which gain strength when it is wet in nature. So, this is because of the temporary alignment in the amorphous region. When it absorbs water, there is temporary al al alignment of the amorphous region. You can see nearly 30 to 35 percentage of amorphous region is there. So, the water can get inside this uh, polymer uh, fabric, this get inside this structure with the help help of the amorphous region. Therefore, there is temporary alignment of the amorphous region which increases 5 percentage of the tenacity of the polymer uh, fabric. If you take the elastoplastic nature, uh, this is mostly inelastic in nature and they wrinkle and crease easily. So, uh, this uh, polymer they wrinkle and crease easily even though there are hydrogen bonding, the amorphous region is very high therefore the wrinkle cannot be re re restored even if the hydrogen bonding is reformed after some time. And it has hygroscopic nature where water en enters inside the amorphous region therefore swelling may take place easily and water get retained for a long time compared to other synthetic fibers water will get in, uh, retained uh, here in this uh, fiber ok. So, this is about your uh, uh, nature of the this is about the nature of your uh, polymer uh, system of cotton. So, in this uh, slide what we saw is uh, this is your session 4 and in your session 4 we saw we classified polymers into inorganic, organic and uh, natural synthetic based on source, based on applications. Based on source we saw how the cotton system is. I have given you the diagram representation for this. So, it has a linear cellulose polymer. It has uh, a repeat unit which is cellobios unit. There are 5000 repeat units uh, and it has well ordered and crystalline structure. And 
and if you see the properties of that due to the presence of this hydrogen bonding and uh, weak van der Waals forces is very significant therefore what happens uh, and amorphous nature also so it, the polymer exhibits tenacity it is hygroscopic and uh, of course the elastoplastic nature is very uh, very least the elastoplastic nature is very least it decreases with uh, cotton therefore this is about your um, cotton fabric